Hi, this is Brian Venton here with another My Town Media opinion piece that I've called Coincidence or Collusion. 53,957 people in Townsville voted to install a new mayor in Walker Street. But where is he now? Well, my sources tell me that the mayor has now been locked out of Walker Street. I think Townsville residents deserve to know what's going on and whether the events of recent weeks have any basis in law. Now let me explain what in my view has happened. This latest attack on the Mayor is a direct consequence of motions moved on the 5th of June at the ordinary meeting of council. So what happened on the 5th? Well listen carefully, there's a bit in this. The councillors through a series of procedural motions voted to give themselves a power in law that in my view they were not entitled to have. It enabled them to remove the Mayor as chairman of all meetings. First, they voted to change the code of meeting practice policy. Now, that's OK. You can do that. But then secondly, they voted to amend Rule 6.5.1 by first deleting it, then replacing it in a form that surreptitiously allowed them to move another motion to remove the mayor from the chair and appoint Councillor Greeny as the new chairperson of all subsequent meetings of council. But it didn't stop there. In their third motion, as a package, they moved a no-confidence motion calling on the Mayor to resign, stripped him of virtually all his responsibilities, and then instructed the CEO to contact the Minister to, sp to, to suspend the Mayor. It all happened in a flash, in the blink of the eye, and the coup to dispose the Mayor was done. Or was it? Now, what the councillors don't realise is that they have probably committed serious breaches of misconduct. Yes, technically, we still have a mayor, but he's muted and nobbled. And now, by locking the duly elected mayor from entering the building, the actions of our councillors have escalated to a whole new level. All these actions, I suggest, are un unconstitutional. Now, let me explain. The LGA Act of 2009 clearly states, in part, that it is the Mayor and only the Mayor who chairs all meetings of Council unless he delegates that responsibility to another. But the councillors gave themselves a power to rewrite the Act and strip the Mayor of his responsibilities as defined by that Act. Constitutionally, they simply had no power in law to do what they did. Changing the Act is the preserve of the state legislature, not councillors. It means that the action to rewrite Rule 6.5.1 and subsequent actions were entirely unlawful. And the point needs to be stressed here that you cannot give yourself an authority if you are legally not entitled to that authority in the first place. Now this is why Section 27 exists. It says... If there is any inconsistency between a local law and a law made by the state, the law made by the state prevails to the extent of the inconsistency. So the motions moved on the 5th are inconsistent with the Act and, in my view, should be struck down immediately. Now, this is where it gets really interesting, and I think Townsville voters need to be aware because we have an election coming up in October. The State Minister under Section 121 has the power to suspend or revoke any of these decisions of local government if, it is, if they are contrary to the law or inconsistent with local government principles. Now, because no council has authority to strip the Mayor of his legislated responsibilities and they have sought to change the law to achieve that outcome, the councillors have effectively put themselves above the law and the Minister, in my view, should immediately intervene to correct this grievous wrong committed not only against the Mayor, but also against the electors of Townsville. And the question is, will the Minister intervene and revoke these unconstitutional actions and restore the Mayor to his rightful place? I suspect the Minister won't take any action because at this point in the election cycle it would probably have a huge negative impact on the ALP. On the other hand, if she doesn't act, it could mean that the Minister may be conflicted in some way. Unfortunately, 
It's not easy to cover up what looks like serious intent to do harm to the mayor as a public officer. Now, I think there's a lot more going on here than we realise, and there seems to be a concerted effort to get rid of the mayor at all costs, even to the extent of stripping him of his constituted responsibilities. Now, this is serious stuff. And sadly, some councillors probably have no idea that they may have been used in the process, while others, I suggest, are full of knowing. Now, my understanding is that the legal department of council were involved in helping to craft all the motions of the fifth. Now, that makes sense because, in my view, no councillor in and of himself had the ability to either craft the motions in the first place nor had the procedural knowledge to formulate a strategy to nobble the mayor. Unfortunately, all 10 councillors, the knowing ones and the unknowing ones, have acted in concert together and therefore are complicit in what might be a deliberate attempt to conspire to remove the mayor from office. Now, the question is whether there are other influences behind the scenes who are involved. The 53,956 electors who voted for the mayor Plus, I just suggest the 48,575 electors who didn't vote for the mayor have a right to know what's going on. And I hope the minister and the office of the independent assessor and the crime and the corruption commission are taking notice of what's happening. Now, I'll let you make up your own mind whether the events over these past weeks are merely coincidental or a collusion. These views are an expression of my honest opinions and time will tell if I'm right. Thanks for watching, and remember, the things that appear are not always as they seem. Bye.